What is up guys? It's ya boy Rick, perfectly balanced as all things should be, Akakis here, and today the brand new Agers Scepter Exotic Stasis Trace Rifle just went live with a new exotic quest. If you haven't done it and want to know how to get it, check my guide out it's linked up above. But the obvious next question is, how good is this thing? Well, most people are gonna play a couple Crucible games and put out a review, but ya boy is crazy. So I've gotten a full fire team, all six people, utilizing this brand new exotic, and we are taking it through the entirety of the largest raid in Destiny 2 history, Last Wish, to see how it really performs in an end game environment. And so, let's get started. But just before we do, Hey, are you almost done gaming? You know, I think I just might be. Ooh, never mind. What? Well, what's wrong? Don't let this happen to you. You need the help of today's sponsor, Manscaped, and the Performance Package 4.0. Firstly, it comes with the Weed Whacker now to deal with those pesky nose and ear hair. 70% of women said they don't like that stuff, and the other 30% are frankly lying because who likes ear hair? Come on. It also comes with the brand new Lawnmower 4.0, skin safe technology, ceramic blades, and a light. Do you know how useful this thing is? Not to mention it comes with the Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver to keep things feeling and smelling fresh. You know what though, I wish it also came with a convenient carrying case. Oh wait, it does! I wish it also came with a wireless charger. Oh wait, it does! It's everything you need. Visit manscaped.com slash cacushd and when you click this link, you get 20% off and free shipping and two free gifts, brother. This is the deal of the century right here. So definitely check it out in the description down below. Seriously guys, I can confirm male grooming matters. All right, now let's check out this thing's exotic perks. Firstly, it has Agur's Call. Final blows with this weapon generate a slowing burst around the defeated target. It also has Riga's Refrain. Stasis final blows transfer ammo to this weapon's magazine from reserves. Essentially, it's subsistence, but for stasis kills. So how does this perform in the first encounter against Kali? Well, when you're holding off the plates, oh my goodness, this thing is fantastic at clearing out adds. You just kill one thrall and all all of the ones around it free solid and if you kill one of those then they explode and will likely kill the others like one kill can often chain into many but moving on from there let's talk about the actual boss fight against Kali so we set things up and as you can see oh it's not, not performing too well we did about a, a third a fourth of her health really nothing to write home about. So we kept trying and yeah, this thing just wasn't capable of getting the one phase. We probably could have, I asked the question to my team, uh, is anyone else running any bubbles or wells? And they're all like, uh, well, we should have done that. So aside from that though, honestly guys, you should not be using this against Kali. I've seen things like completely one phase her and stuff like that. This is definitely at least in the first encounter, it appears to be more of an ad clearing weapon. And therefore, in this encounter against Kali, I've got to give it a 5 out of 10. It's just like on the nose, completely average here. Moving on from there, however, we do have Shirochi. Now, this is interesting because we have to do one sixth of her health or else the entire team wipes. So, is the Aegir's Scepter capable of doing that? Well, as you can see, it actually is. And I would say that it's relatively consistent in getting there. It's close. I've seen other weapons do significantly better, but frankly, I've also seen other weapons do worse. Like all of us using this thing, we hit that damage threshold every time. But again, it, there was some sketchy moments. And so I would advise you probably not to DPS Shirochi with this thing. However, the main difference between this and the first encounter is significantly more adds, like significantly. And there, the scepter really, really shines. Like it will wipe out entire waves of spawning a thrall in, in a second. Like one second, a couple kills, they chain all of the stasis explosions and they're dead. It's truly incredible, and therefore, because it's so good against the ads, and average at best against Shirochi, I'm gonna give this thing, at the end of the day, a seven out of 10. Certainly above average, but nothing super incredible. But moving on from there, we have the third encounter against Morgoth, and you know we going for that one phase. Can the scepter actually melt Morgoth? Well, 
in that beginning part, again, you're holding out uh, against ads and the scepter is even better here just because all the ads spawn in one little area and it's pretty much the exact radius of your stasis explosions so you just murk those guys every time they spawn but against Morgoth himself as you can see it was a little bit close. He got up to, you know, just before 90% strength, but we were able to get that one phase. So again, I've certainly seen worse, but this is uh, not really the weapon you want to be using for DPSing a boss. And therefore, I think it deserves, again, just a... 7 out of 10. Again, it's above average. It got the one phase. Great against the ads, but you could still do better. However, moving on from there, I think we have one of the most interesting encounters with the vault. So here, there's no raid boss fight. We are just killing normal enemies, and then we have to kill some kind of big, chunky mini boss knights. And so it turns out this thing, you know, it's been great against ads all along. So in this encounter, it really does shine. Absolutely decimates, especially groups of spawning ads. And then against those knights, it's kind of weird because... On the one hand, it's not great. Like, let's be honest, I'm taking quite a long time to kill this knight. I could be using a lot of other things, you know, a Cartesian coordinate, and absolutely melt this knight. So definitely, in terms of DPS, you probably should be using other things. But on the other hand, sometimes when you just kill an ad near a knight, it freezes the knight solid. So when you're going around your business, you know, killing ads, you're also completely freezing knights in their tracks, which obviously is incredible for setting up headshots, doing damage with whatever. So if you are running a great heavy, like, I don't know, a linear fusion rifle or a sword or whatever to take down those knights, you can still totally use the scepter for ad clearing, freeze a knight solid, get an easy headshot against him, and melt that guy pretty darn quickly. So that's kind of an interesting thing to think about. And so overall, in this encounter, I was more impressed than not. I hate to say it again, but I think it's going to land on a 7.5 out of 10. Let's give it an extra 0.5 because it's so good at ad clearing. But moving on from there, we have the big daddy of damage phases against Riven. And uh, you know we going for that cheese. How much damage can this thing do in a short period of time? Hasn't been doing well so far, but it's always interesting to see the numbers. And here are those numbers. So, of course, couldn't get Riven even down to halfway of her health. And it turns out this thing is doing approximately 320,000 damage, with the top damage being a 341,000 damage. So this is definitely nothing to write home about in the DPS department. It's almost kind of what you would expect in terms of a trace rifle. Of course, something like the Cold Heart, where it does more and more and more damage, is going to surpass that in the DPS department. But yeah, the Scepter, it's really more of an ad-clearing weapon. And therefore, here, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. But there is one more encounter, the Queen's Walk. And here, just like the Vault encounter, we have no bosses. And therefore, the ad clearing capabilities really, really shine here. I actually got teleported in right away. And here, where you normally, like the entire mechanic of this area is to get overwhelmed by ads, this thing just completely decimates them. Like you'll see as more and more and more ads spawn near the end of the encounter, all of us are using this and just freezing entire groups solid and then just shattering them so easily. I genuinely don't think I've ever had an easier time in this encounter than with the Scepter. Like it is just, not only is it killing ads quickly, but when it's not, it's freezing them so it prevents them from shooting you. So your survivability goes up as well. And I asked the guys who were still outside and they said it was phenomenal too, just freezing and killing everything they needed it to. So in this encounter in Queen's Walk, I'm actually gonna give this thing a nine out of 10. Like this is pretty much exactly what you want here. And so guys, that brings us to the overall rating. And I think it's a pretty clear and fair seven out of 10. This is certainly above average, mainly because of its incredible ad clearing capabilities. Freezing has proven itself even in high level activities like Grandmaster to be super useful for dealing with ads. 
However, in terms of DPS output, yeah, don't expect this to be used in any sort of DPS strategy, you know, pretty much ever because it just isn't putting out enough damage. In case you're wondering, we did test like Focusing Lens and the other uh, mod that made kinetic weapons deal more damage against enemies affected by stasis and neither of them, at least according to our tests, worked. So the damage you're seeing is pretty much the damage you're always going to get. But that is it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed and found this interesting. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.